for you with contrite heart. Humbly I surrender all that I am. I want to learn from you. Please draw me close to you. Let me share your love and grace in all I do. Lord, I come before you with contrite heart. Humbly I surrender all that I am. I want to learn from you. Please draw me close to you. Let me share your love and grace in all I do. search the word of God together and find encouragement even to the reading of that word. So could I invite you to bow your head with me as we invite the presence of God with us. Heavenly Father, may you bless us in the reading of your word. And may it allow our hearts to be encouraged now we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Have you ever heard about fear? That foreboding, that thing that holds you back from even making some of life most important decisions. That thing that keep you back from leaving your home, maybe even venturing into the unknown, not being unsure of the future, and being fearful of making those decisions. Sometimes it's rational, but most times it's rather irrational. For example, if I'm walking through the forest one day and I come upon a lion, that it's only rational that I should fear that land, given the reputation and the knowledge of the prowess of that land, I would definitely be exhibiting rational fear. Even if I may even run. But there are other occasions when we are faced with life challenges and there is no real reason to fear. But all that keeps us well, that haunts us, is really our own foreboding and therefore it keeps us from being successful, it keeps us from really having the joy that this life should have. And so this morning I just want to share with you from the Word of God, hear what God has to say as it relates to our fears, and even through the reading of the Word, again, that our hearts will be encouraged. So I want you to join with me in the reading of the Word, we in the book of Luke, and we're reading from Luke 21 and verse 26. Chapter 21 and verse 26. The Bible says, Men's heart in these days will fail them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming upon the earth. For the powers of heaven shall, shall be shaken. It is true. Crime, violence, name it, natural disasters, there are quite a number of things that cause us to fear. And the Bible itself says that because we are living in the last days of this earth's history, 
these signs, these things will come upon man that he'll become so fearful that even his heart will fail him. When last have you looked at the news? When last have you picked up a newspaper or go through your, your, your smartphones or smart devices and notice that the heart of man is so wicked and the violence level is so great that it is fearful to live in such a world? One day, it's all about peace. You feel safe. You feel confident about your existence. And next day, everything disappears. The comfort that you have once had, whether it's your home, whether it's a vehicle, whether it's your family, all could be gone in a split second. But if God knew that this time would come upon us, when great fear would rule the land, has he made provisions for us? Has he put things in place that if we are only conscious of it, that we'll be able to rise above our fears and to live a full life in Jesus? Well, of course he did. And that's why we're going to continue in the reading of the Bible this morning and look at the provisions that God has made so that we don't have to live in fear. We don't have to be afraid of the robber. We don't have to be afraid of the thief. We don't have to fear uh, of the weather or all that is going on around us. But that we could have a quiet confidence, a confidence that only God could give, an assurance that only God himself could guarantee. And so we're going over to the Old Testament, to the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6. And the word of God says, For unto us a child is born. Who is that child the Bible is speaking of today? It's no other person than Jesus Christ himself. Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. That is important for us to understand. Because in a world where it's so difficult to find peace, it's so difficult to have that quiet time whereby you don't have to be fearful of anything, you must have Jesus. In fact, Isaiah called him the Prince of Peace. He's a mighty God. He's a wonderful counselor. One who understands you, understands your needs, understands your fears, and says, you don't have to fear, but you could trust me because I could give you peace. And I will give you peace. Not any ordinary peace, but a peace that the world itself cannot give you. A security that the security forces can't give. Whether it's the police, whether it's the soldiers. A peace where you don't have to worry that even the bubble of proof on your house cannot give you, but God himself will be able to give you. And so this Jesus says, Now, believe in me, trust in me, come to me, for I am the Prince of Peace. When last have you sought for peace? Or um, should I ask more accurately, where have you searched for peace? Some try to find it in individuals. Some try to look for that peace, maybe in acquiring wealth and monies and all of those things. But have you listened to the news recently? That even when many businesses, whether it's on Wall Street or otherwise, plunge into debt, that many of these rich men, the CEOs and, and managers, commit suicide, all because their peace were locked up in the wealth, and only knowing that they have lost it, they themselves have lost all hope. But with God, there is no need to fear. There is no hope to be lost, because he himself says, I am the Prince of Peace. And so true peace only come in having Jesus. Things will be here today and gone tomorrow, but God is forever. And as long as you accept him in your life, there is no need to fear, no need to worry, because indeed he will be your everlasting peace. In fact, the Bible not only stopped there in Isaiah in declaring that God is the Prince of Peace, but over in the book of John, John chapter 14, it goes further into explaining how God himself worked in guaranteeing us that peace. And so even as I turn, I'm going to read in your hearing, and I'm reading from John chapter 14 and verse 27, John 14 and verse 27. Jesus himself declares in his word, Peace I live with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you, but let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Oh, what a wonderful promise today. 
Don't let your heart be troubled. Don't be afraid. Are you afraid of sickness? As many today are being uh, tied up and bogged down with, with all various ailments of, of from cancers to, to heart disease to, to uh, high blood pressure and arthritis and, and the various diseases that are out there. And they have become fearful and they are ready to give up. They are ready to throw in the towel. But a message today from the word of God says, let not your heart be troubled. Maybe it's a family situation. Maybe it's a broken home. A spouse who may be unfaithful. Or children who are ill-disciplined. And there's worries in the home. And there's problems and, and, and heartache. And, and yet God says to us, let not your heart be troubled. Maybe it's a financial situation. School is soon to reopen. There are school books to be purchased. There are uniforms to be purchased. And the expense could be great. Maybe it's the mortgage. The bank is calling. The creditors are calling. And you just don't have the means to meet all of your debts. God still reminds you, let not your heart be troubled. Maybe you have been seeking to hire your education or follow your education. But there's no scholarships available. And definitely you have no means to pay the exorbitant fees. But yet God says, let not your heart be troubled. So if God should be so firm and so reassuring, there must be something about him whereby he could tell us and remind us and convince us that we have no need to worry. And the reason is quite simple. God is the one who created heaven and earth. God is the one who is still in charge. That old song that we learned from even from childhood growing up says, he got the whole world in his hand. And because he has the whole world in his hand, we can trust him. Political parties come in and they go out. Businesses rise up and businesses fail. But with Jesus, there is no failure. But with Jesus, he is from everlasting to everlasting. Let not your heart be troubled. In fact, John Father went on by reassuring us in John chapter 14 and verse 1. He says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it was not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. One of the most interesting things I've learned in recent time, when it comes to fears, or some refer to it phobias, there's, all, there's a phobia that is called phobophobia. What is phobophobia? Phobophobia is a fear of fear. Could you believe it? That our hearts have become so weakened and we have become so fearful that men are afraid of fear itself. And because we have become so irrational, God says, I don't want you building upon the sands of this life. If you have to build a future, let it be built on me. And that's what Jesus is saying to us. Put your life in his hand. For a time is coming when all of the violence will end. All of the heartbreaks will end. All of the broken homes will cease. All of the financial struggles will come to an end. And Jesus himself will set up his kingdom. And in that kingdom, he said that there are mansions. Mansions that are prepared for you. Mansions where you don't have to pay mortgages. Mansions where you don't have to pay electricity bills. Mansions where you don't have to pay water bills. Mansions that he himself has gone to prepare. So let not your heart be troubled, friends. I don't know what you're going through at this moment, but this same Jesus is here for you today. If only you would whisper a prayer with me even at this time. Surrender your heart and your life in his hand and allow him to take away your fears. Allow him to take away your doubts. Allow him to be your provider. And even when this life is over, he says, there are better things that are in store. So what a wonderful promise we have with us today that this same Jesus is telling us, even though you see the wars, you hear the rumors of wars, even though you see the great destructions to the hurricanes and the storms and the earthquakes, even, see, even though you see financial ruin and the economic landscape of this earth, but don't be afraid because Jesus is still in charge. And so at this moment, even with that conviction, I want to pray for you. So would you just bow your head quietly wherever you are at this time? 
and just put your life in the hands of Jesus, even as he takes your fears, takes your doubt, and show them all away. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the assurance of your There is no God like unto you. And your desire is to take away all of our fears, to forgive us freedom even above the storms. And so even now as our hearts are lifted heavenward, may you give us courage. May you take away every fear that individuals may have, whether it's a money fear, finances or health, or family relationships, whatever they are fearful of at this time, give them the victory over those fears and allow them to know you the God who provide, the God who stick it closer than a brother, and the God who will never leave them nor forsake them. So bless us now and guide us through the remainder of this day we ask. In Jesus' name, amen. So may God bless you. Have a wonderful day until we meet again. God bless you, everyone. Help me shine a light to a darkened world And always hear the truth in every way May your love for me be seen by everyone And lead others to trust and love you more